So, thank you for joining me here at Amanduera. Myself and Alistair have just done a golf school out here. Went pretty well, didn't it? Went great, yeah. yeah. Out here for four days. A couple of rounds of golf, bit of coaching. Um, but we've actually got access to this superb drive range to film some some videos which are hopefully going to help you perform a little bit better on the golf course. So I thought I'd invite Alistair onto my channel, ask him a question because Alistair, like me, coaches at Hit Golf Academy, uh, part of the team of three coaches we have there. Uh, and very similar to me, Alistair coaches a variety of clients, but you know the average handicap golfer would be Probably mid-teens, I yeah, would think. Exactly. So the question I'm going to ask Alistair, which I think is going to help you, the viewer, is, you know, what are the two, well, what are the two of the most common faults that you see, um, which, if a golfer could work on these, would see probably the biggest improvement in their game? I know this is, you know, something we've spoken about before, so I'm yeah. going to hand it over to you, and uh, and you can hopefully give them some words of wisdom. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Okay, go for it. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> um, so basically. I would say the two most common things I see, and, and you have slight trends years to year which might change, but the two most common things I see that make the biggest difference to people at the moment were probably what I class as wrist conditions or the wrist position at the top of the backswing. That would be number one. Yep. Number two would be more how they finish the swing or how they finish kind of halfway through the swing, this kind of what I would call post-impact position. Okay. Um, We'll do one at a time, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. so go for lead wrist first or so, wrist conditions? Or? Yeah. Okay. So basically, if we, when we're talking about the lead wrist position at the top of the backswing, the most common thing I would see would be what I would class as a very cup position, just to keep it very, very simple here. And what that causes, basically, it causes on the way down, it makes it much easier for people then on the way down to come across the golf ball, even good players. They'll come very steeply in the first move down and they'll either have to make a compensation then to make contact with the ball and a lot of good players then will early extend and flick a little bit yeah. and obviously the worst players then will from here will just swipe across the golf ball and hit that big slice shape that obviously most people want to get rid of probably the most common ball fight yeah. we would see certainly teen handicap and up yeah, yeah. so a lot, a lot of a lot of viewers think will maybe think that they come steeper over the top but maybe not know why okay and that's yeah. a pretty pretty common reason yeah yeah it can be caused obviously by the backswing arm direction yeah. too but nearly that's always linked to if the arms work in a certain way the wrist will be cupped yeah. as we would see it all the time so for me if we can get that left wrist a bit more organized in simple terms then that's going to help you control the direction of your downswing and also help the club face too because obviously as the two club face one. yeah <laughs> as the club face gets uh or the re-wrist gets stronger if you like or more flat it makes the club face stronger or more closed so again most people we would see would have that left to right ball flight so making the club face stronger and also helping the direction of the club on the way down two for one as we said yeah. then they're going to benefit from both absolutely i mean you think you would probably agree that if you can get that lead wrist in a better position um you know if we listed what we think might happen probably uh, more neutral ball flight yeah better quality strike yeah more distance yes all the things that that people yeah. want and that lead wrist is so key to that isn't it massively and i think it's one of the biggest things people can change I think if, if, if the lead wrist is good, then happy days and you've got very little to do in terms yeah. of what we're talking about so far in this video. But if it isn't, you're going to have huge changes straight away. And one of the ways I, I would kind of address it, if you like, would be to do some one-handed swings. So if you took your left hand only on the golf club and made a backswing, it's going to be much harder physically to do this. You're going to feel it much more in your muscles to be able to get that lead wrist in the flat position. If I cut my wrist, it changes the pressure in my arm. Mm -hmm. So it's a way you can do this in the house make some swings and it also builds up your left arm dominance which most people are pretty weak in the right arm is very dominant so that's part of the reason the right arm takes over in the wrist cups so it helps create the right kind of wrist feels we want and almost from there i'd almost want to feel like these knuckles work the way down and away from you away from your forearm and this thumb points off towards if there's a wall behind me for example or towards chris's bag here it points in that direction and i can feel that as a strain and I've done this drill loads of times, I can still feel it physically. So it gives you a physical feel straight away for what we're trying to get them to achieve, or I want them to achieve. Yeah. I'm sure you do too. Yeah, absolutely. So that would be the first thing. Okay, so the second thing was? Second thing is going to be more about the post-impact position. So what we're looking for there really is how they can get their arms to extend, and also at the same time get the body to extend. So quite simply, I call it rotate and relocate. So what they're going to try and do from here is get their chest working upwards, I call it heart to the sky, and their arms to be really extended out and pointed towards where we want to go. Yeah. Obviously, they're going to be coming inward, but they're yeah. going to be stretched. Yeah. So we want to see really some half shots where they would feel kind of heart to the sky and arms extended out yeah. and get that feeling of rotating and extending at the same time. What we tend to see, again, I, I think you'll agree with me, is we see a lot of these arms parting, mm. the radius of the swing shortening, so they struggle to make contact with the ball and their low point then is all over the place. Yeah. Might hit a good shot, then a bad shot, 
and really so because they haven't got this commitment to moving their body and arms correctly through the golf ball. Exactly. So just just hit me a little shot that goes 20 or 30 yards and just show yeah. show me what that that Looks kind like. of follow through would be like. Okay. So you see that kind of structure arms that you talk about, chest yeah. up to the sky, and that's difficult for a lot of golfers, isn't it? Yeah, again, we don't see that very often. Again, we see a lot of kind of this kind of head down, crumpled look, and they think they've got to keep the head down, and that's what they've been told by various people, normally relatives, yeah. not normally friends golf coaches, course, yeah. friends on the course and playing partners. So the more they can get the kind of feeling of, okay, let's get some ground contact and some extension, then for me, they're going to create more speed. Because they're rotating, they're going to create a better control of the club face through the golf ball. And if their arms are extended, their control of the contact point is going to be far more consistent. Mm. So for me, it does a lot of things. And it's neglected. I don't yeah. think many coaches work on it. I know you do a little bit. I don't think many coaches work on it. And I don't think many golfers work on it because they think well, it's after the ball. Yeah. So Absolutely. for me, it's a key area that will... It changes impact for me a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think you know the two things you covered there. You know, lead wrist is going to control club face, which relates to curve. The extension on the way through is going to strike, and you know, as a general rule, the golfers who are struggling, those are the things they need to work on. You know, controlling the curve on the golf ball yeah. and striking it better. Because if you can go onto the course thinking to yourself, well, I kind of know what the ball's going to do. I can control its curve, and I feel like I'm going to strike the ball at the middle of the club most times. You can get around the course. Yeah. The terrible rounds that people have is when the ball's curving off line, losing balls. They can't strike it and those kind of things. So I think if we can get the golfers to strike it better, control the curve, happy days, course records going all around yeah. the country. Yeah. Absolutely. Alistair, thanks very much. Pleasure. Hopefully there's something, there's something there that you can, uh, you know, you can use to help your game. Um, if you can't, it doesn't work. I'll give you Alistair's email down below. <laughs> but uh, no, only joking there. So, uh, well worth Chad King Alistair's channel out. He's got his own channel, Alistair Davies Golf. I will link it down below. I will also put a link over here in a moment, which will allow you to subscribe to him. Great content. Okay. You're releasing three videos each week, are you? Yep. Three videos each week, variety of topics. Uh, hopefully going to help you play some better golf. So I have to say thank you to Amanduera. They've been fantastic, haven't they, for the, for the time we've awesome, been here. Yeah. If you are in the area looking to play fantastic courses and practice on some awesome facilities, it's well worth checking it out. Usual stuff is down below. There's a little, also a link to Alistair's channel over here and my channel. Comments box, like button. Hope you enjoyed it. We shall hopefully see you back here again soon.